This is Dr. Bill O'Neill. I'm the medical director for the Center for Structural Heart Disease at Henry Ford Hospital. Uh, this afternoon, we're going to be demonstrating how to deploy the Watchman device. This is a device used to uh, perform left atrial appendage occlusion uh, as an alternative for patients to, with anticoagulation who are treated uh, with chronic atrial fibrillation. Uh, the left atrial appendage uh, morphology is different from patient to patient. We found a wonderful new way of being able to place the device uh, in a very safe and effective manner. Uh, with me is Dr. Didi Wang, who is the head of our structural imaging program, and she's going to tell you basically how we plan and uh, perform the procedure. Didi? So this is our patient, Ms. D. This is actually her personalized heart. It's a 3D print that we made over a week ago when she was at home waiting for this procedure. And we actually do a CT scan, and we can take a look at her left atrial appendage, which is right here. And we're going to test drive a device in here before she actually even comes into the case. We can fit and pick our catheters before the case actually begins to help improve patient safety and patient outcomes. Our children's field is going to demonstrate that for you right now. So, Dee, if you would just hold this open for me so, yep. so we can look at the, at the camera. So the, the device, this is basically the, the sheath that goes in and it's going to go into the left atrial appendage and then we're going to deploy the device. So this goes through the intraatrial septum and then when the device is properly positioned, uh, we will go ahead and place it. And you can see that it's actually sitting quite nicely in this appendage. So we know that this particular device will sit and completely occlude this left atrial appendage. And we can do this all ahead of time before the patient's ever on the table. So it's really dramatically improved our success rate in placement of this device and also improved the safety. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate the procedure to you now. We are going to be placing a pigtail catheter in the left atrial appendage uh, as the first step uh, after the transeptal puncture has been done. You can see on the screen that uh, we're advancing a pigtail catheter into the left atrial appendage. And uh, this allows us to visualize uh, to make sure that we get an adequate position and really to try to get an understanding of um, the uh, line of uh, flight of the of the uh, Watchman catheter when we go in. Uh, we're going to be making uh, an angiogram here in just a moment. And uh, again, this is just a, a baseline to try to see where we're going to be placing the delivery device. Uh, we're doing most of this procedure under fluoroscopic guidance, and also we'll verify the position by echo. And so now we're going to go ahead and do um, an angiogram. And you can see there with the dye injection uh, that the pigtail catheter is sitting nicely in a coaxial position uh, uh, in the left atrial appendage. This gives us a very first uh, feel for where the, uh, where the appendage is and then where the pigtail is sitting. And we verify the pigtail position uh, by the echocardiogram. Now, uh, Dr. Wang has uh, a angiographic position that she's modeled on her 3D model, and you can see that uh, we, we know the exact radiographic image, and she's pointing to the tip of the appendage uh, where we're going to want to be pointing uh, the, de the, the delivery catheter. Uh, we have the exact angle in this patient. It looks like it's a steep uh, caudal with sort of an AP projection, but this is all decided ahead of time, and so it's really very easy for us to... Uh, position. Now the next step is to put a very stiff a rosin wire, which we've made in, in, into a small loop. And what I'm doing here is basically I'm just taking a rosin wire and making a small knuckle at the tip of it. Uh, we like this wire because it's, it's pretty malleable at the tip, but it's very stiff and it allows us to safely uh, uh, enter into the left atrial appendage. In the early uh, uh, experience, uh, there was a, a pretty substantial risk of pericardial effusion, uh, and even a few surgeries that resulted because of uh, perforation of the left atrial appendage. The appendage itself, uh, you have to treat with a great deal of respect because it's a very thin wall structure. Although it is malleable and it can, can stretch, uh, you really have a risk of, of uh, rupture of the appendage and then uh, dramatic uh, pericardial effusion that could occur. So we're really taking a great deal of care and that's why we're doing all these exchanges kind of carefully. We have the uh, rosin wire now in the tip of the appendage, and what we're going to be doing here, slightly different than other people, is we're putting in a 16 French sheath inside the ephemeral vein. And the reason that we like this sheath is because it will then allow uh, uh, 
placement of the de delivery catheter without any uh, uh, friction from the venous structure. So now you see that we have the sheath placed. Uh, we've pre-closed the veins before with two per-close stitches. And then at the end of the procedure, we just simply uh, close the, uh, the axis site. What we're doing now is we're just very carefully taking the dilator out and leaving the, leaving the sheath in place. Now, after the 16 French sheath has been placed in the femoral vein, uh, we're going to place the, the large um, uh, watchman delivery uh, sheath. Uh, it's 12 French in diameter, and the 16 French really allows us to have no friction. You can see uh, as the sheath is getting advanced uh, across the septum, uh, that there's very little friction. And what I'm watching now on the screen is we're, we're, we're sending the delivery device up into the appendage. We leave the wire in. Another very important point here is that we leave the wire in until the very end because if you pull the, if you pull the dilator out rapidly, you can actually cause a large bubble to occur and then that bubble could embolize. And again, in the early experience, there actually were some embolic events that people attributed to what, to, um, to bubbles. So finally, when we have the sheath in place, and uh, we're getting ready now to advance the, uh, the Watchman catheter, uh, you can see that the sheath is going in over this Rosen wire. We're carefully advancing it. And uh, there, are two, there are three different angles. There's either an anterior, a double curve, or a single, single curve. And Dr. Wang kind of helps us decide that ahead of time in terms of which curve will give us the best angle of position. So now we've got, we have the pigtail catheter uh, deep in the left atrial appendage at the angle that we want, and we have the Watchman delivery catheter sitting uh, inside, the, um, uh, inside the left atrial appendage. We're going to very carefully snug the sheath up into, the, up into position and, um, and then do an angiogram to verify that we're in the right location. And there you can see that we're doing initial dye injection, and then we're going to do a cine angiogram. We're verifying then that the position is uh, is appropriate, and we're, I'm just advancing the sheath now, and just carefully advancing with a counterclockwise turn in this particular case. Again, really try not not to push the pigtail out, but basically just having. Uh, the sheath carefully advanced until we're at the tip of the left atrial appendage. And it's basically in exactly the position that Dr. Wang had predicted we would be. So now we've got the delivery sheath uh, right up against the wall of the left atrial appendage. And this is, again, where you have to take a great deal of care not to put a lot of extra pressure on the appendage because that's where the risk of perforation could occur. So now we have the sheath careful in place. Uh, the pigtail catheter has been removed, and now uh, we're gently advancing the Watchman device. We're going to be watching very closely. You can see that my left hand is still, and my right hand is very gently advancing uh, the Watchman catheter. Uh, we're going to be putting a small mark, and uh, when you start, I think this is a good thing to do, is to have uh, an assistant put a small mark on the, on the fluoro screen, uh, where the tip of the device is supposed to land. Uh, unfortunately, the the um, uh, initial part of the watchman is not very radio opaque. You have to be very careful not to um, uh, advance it too far because, again, this is where the risk of of uh, perforation of the appendage could occur. So, what we're doing right now is we're going to initially advance uh, the watchman device right to the very tip. And you see we're watching at the very tip. The two um, uh, markers have to come uh, into app position so that we know we're in the right location. So the tip is coming. And we're going very slowly and very methodically. This is where there's absolutely no need to make any kind of rush or fast movements here because you want to try to make sure that the device is safely deployed uh, in the uh, left atrial appendage. And now the, 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 the catheter is being gently withdrawn, uh, pushing a little bit on your right hand and pulling on your left, and you're basically un, unsheathing the device. 
And what we're doing is just connecting contrast at the tip so that we can inject contrast. And then uh, if we need to, you can look at, at markers. Uh, all of this time we're in communication with the uh, echo uh, assistant to make sure that we're in, in the right location. So now the device has been deployed and we're gonna be doing a final angiogram. And so we're, we have the pigtail catheter back in place. And you'll see in just a moment that the device has been uh, completely deployed and we've got, the, we've got the device in a very good position. Uh, the tip of the appendage has been entirely uh, obliterated and all of the trabecula that are present that could cause clots have been removed. And then basically then it's a matter of just, uh, of just removing all of the equipment uh, coming out and then we're gonna do a, a, a perclose of the femoral vein. So now that we've got the 16 French uh, catheter uh, removed, uh, we're gonna be, we have the, we've had the two preclosed sutures in place and the, the technique we're doing is, is really pretty similar to uh, arterial closure. We use one uh, suture in the uh, 12 o'clock position and one at the two o'clock position. And then with an assistant, when the, um, when the first uh, uh, suture gets dropped, then we'll, we'll pull. Uh, there isn't the, the, the brisk bleeding that you get with the arterial system, so it's not quite as much of a, of a rush to do this. And you see that we've got the wire, the wires going in. And we leave that as a safety wire initially. And then you have an assistant come and help you uh, pull the, the uh, venous line and someone else hold pressure on the vein. And we're using the, um, I'd like to use a one-handed technique here. The fellow's using the two-handed technique. And so we're closing and then he just drops the stitch down on the vessel and so we're just tamping it nice and easily. There's very little um, bleeding occurring right now, and even with that first suture, we've almost completely uh, gotten hemostasis. So we don't reverse the anticoagulation of these patients, so this is being done while the patients are fully anticoagulated. And it looks like there's just a little teeny amount of bleeding that persists. We pulled the wire out now, and then we've done the final, uh, the final stitch. And so with that 16 French sheath, on uh, full anticoagulation, we've got venous closure, and, and then uh, this uh, we cut the stitches, and then you could put a small band-aid. So that's basically uh, the closure technique. You can see how much easier it is. Some people use uh, figure of eight sutures. Um, we're not big fans of that. I think that this actually gives you a much more reliable closure. Uh, you don't have to worry about large hematomas, and then you don't have to have somebody come back and, and cut the stitches that you put in the skin. So this is basically just uh, a nice, easy way to do it. You put a Band-Aid over this, and then the patient can just take the Band-Aid out in a couple of days after when they take a shower. And, so, and that's how we've done the large closure. So that basically demonstrates the technique. You can see that uh, the device can be very simply, safely deployed, and we believe that this is going to be a fantastic um, a complement to patients that are at uh, risk for bleeding uh, uh, with atrial fibrillation and as an alternative to anticoagulation therapy for patients with AFib. Thank you very much.